Yes. But uh, nonetheless, while we were there in in October and November of '63, uh, we. I had a car. I had driven. They all flew, and I had a car. I had a great big car, a big Chevy station wagon with nine passengers. So we drove around all over the place. Uh, and among the things that we drove to look at was the building site where they were constructing the World's Fair that was going to open in the following spring. Oh, wow. And it was it was really incredible, magnificent bunch of uh, far-out structures and Kesey had been telling tales of the good times that he and his brother Chuck and uh, their friends and relatives uh, had had at the Seattle World's Fair in 1962. And it was, there were such good stories. I thought, shit, I don't want to miss this one, man. Uh, <laughs> let's do this. And so yeah. we went out and looked at the thing and we agreed, yeah, we're going to come and do this one. Uh, this is going to be a great fair. And so we decided that we were going to come to the World's Fair in the summer of 64. Uh, and so that was settled, but what was not settled was who all would want to go and how we would go. Uh, we were thinking, well, I've got this station wagon, you know, several people in this, and Babs has got one of those Volkswagen combi van things, uh, you know, maybe four people in that, and Kesey's got a uh, a Suburban, uh, you know, with probably five or six seats in, in us, so we're starting to add up people and thinking of caravanning all these old decrepit vehicles all the way well, they weren't that old and decrepit but all the way across the country and the inconvenience of that and uh, we were in Eugene in the early spring of 64 when I saw a phenomenon happening um, I just George I just the, opened the up I just opened up literally when you were saying in the spring of 64, I opened up the electric Kool-Aid acid test and I'll tell you what page this is, brother. Page 67, man. It, you were saying it, bro. And it says here, I read it in the spring of 1964 I had been that Keezy and four or five others would get a station wagon and drive to New York for the New York World's Fair. It, bro, you literally just said the words in the spring of 64 and I opened the book not knowing what page brother and it said I my eyes went right to in the spring of 1964 when you were saying that tell me what that is come on that's crazy I didn't mean to cut you off wow Cassidy used to, Cassidy used to do stuff like that all the time <laughs> uh, and, and when I got to know him better and, and he was just be kind of sitting around talking and, and not performing and he'd say stuff like, uh, you know, I, I don't really understand what the big deal is. Is that I'm just a simple telepath. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, understand I didn't that. used That's to cool. be so much. I always was to a degree. We all are to, to whatever degree we'll allow. Yeah. But last few years I've been doing these Cassidy performances where I really evoke his presence and become a Cassidy character uh, mm. on stage. And, and I have with Brian, become, with Brian Hassett, with Brian Hassett, Brian big Hassett, shout Brian out to Carolina. Brian. I want to get him on the show soon enough. So Brian, if you're listening in brother, or I'll be reaching out soon enough. I want you on what a great fella too. Great writer, incredible writer. Uh, but a, a thing has happened to me. Uh, a good thing as a result. I, well, I don't know if it's a result, but concurrently with this, uh, performing Cassidy and we've done over 30 shows now wow. uh, and when I do that I I do my best to try to really put on that character and become Cassidy hmm. uh, well it's I've become Cassidy not just in that character but in a lot of my life you, you mentioned earlier that you thought I was insightful hmm. uh, Cassidy and Kesey were both really insightful and I always marveled at that uh and and I thought, well, that's an amazing thing that, that these guys just it's like they can just see right into people. Mm. And, and I didn't have that uh, ability. Uh, I've developed it in this last couple of years of doing the Cassidy character. It's like he has bestowed this on me. Wow. Uh, and so I, I was joking about it and, and thinking, well, you know, if I had this mental conversation with him, it would go like this. I'd say, man, this is, I really appreciate what you're doing for me now. So what took you so long? And Cassidy just smiles back and he says, what took you so long? Mm. Mm. Love that, brother. How did you meet Neil, yeah. man? How did you meet Neil? 
uh, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, I had heard of him. He showed up at a friend's house one evening at uh, at Chloe Scott's house. Chloe was lived in a house right around the corner from Perry Lane in Menlo Park. Oh, okay. And, I know Menlo. Uh, we lived in Menlo. She was a, she was a, a dancer and a dance instructor. Uh, very classy, uh, beautiful uh, English woman uh, with a delightful English accent and, and, and flaming red hair. And she, and in, in the back of her house was the studio, uh, where which was also kind of the hangout and party place in the neighborhood because all the rest of the houses were just tiny, with little tiny rooms, and you couldn't really gather. But in Chloe's studio, uh, a dozen people could sit around on. Uh, on the floor on cushions and we could gather. So we were a bunch of us gathered there and Cassidy showed up uh, talking a mile a minute uh, with a troop of followers that I don't remember who they were, but uh, there he was. And uh, it was like always uh, suddenly he stole the show and, mm-hmm. and started talking. And at first I didn't think much of Cassidy. I thought he was just a loud mouth that wouldn't stop talking <laughs> otherwise over the years. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've heard that's how Neil was. He he was on fire. Uh, I guess Jack all, all Jack time, yeah. I, Jack Kerouac uh, wrote about he was he loved the mad ones, mad for people that were mad for the world, mad to do all those things that he mentions, uh, like like a burning Roman candle. He says, you know, I guess that's what yeah, Neil was yeah. like. He like was a, the, he was the burning. most enthusiastic person you ever saw. All the time, if there was something to do, he was the most enthusiastic one. Wow, he, he was just ready to do, ready to go, ready to do something all the time. Wow. Now you became very close friends with Neil. Yeah, I did. I, I spent uh, a good lot of the last couple of years of his life with him. Uh, wow. We took a couple of trips to Mexico together, and uh, oh wow, lived together for months at a time, and got him off of drugs, and got him to just kind of around the house and relax for a few hours at a time and kind of just talk quietly. We'd play cards. We'd play pinochle and things like that. So oh, wow. We'd play chess. And, uh, what did he, talk, what did he like to talk about? Sometimes. He'd what write letters you... home to Carolyn. Oh, wow. Okay, okay, that's cool. So he'd write letters to Carolyn Cassidy.